videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. And use logic and use reason and realize that religion is fake. Now for this video, uh, you know, I really don't know what I'm going to say. I have no idea what I'm going to say. So I just figured I'd cut the camera on and do like I do, talk. Nothing rehearsed. I'm just going to speak. So I wanted to do this video, I guess, addressing the Ahmad Arbery murder. And for those of you that don't uh, know about that, let me see, today is April 13th, 2020. And he was killed, I believe, back in February. But it didn't gain a lot of uh, traction and exposure because everything was flooded with COVID-19 at the time. So, But for those of you that are, that are familiar with the case, uh, it was, uh, Ahmaud Arbery is a 25-year-old young black male that was out for a job in a neighborhood out in Brunswick, Georgia. And, and, he, and there was a, a father and son there, white, who claimed there had been break-ins in the neighborhood and this guy was jogging and they said they wanted to question him. So they get in there, pickup truck, and the son has a shotgun and the father has a pistol and they per, you know, pursue him and kind of block him off with the truck. And the son jumps out of the truck saying he wants to talk to him, but he has a shotgun with him. And, and somehow they got into a tussle. The son and Aubrey got into a tussle. And the son ends up shooting Aubrey twice with the shotgun and Aubrey fell dead. So that was what happened. Uh, it was two months later, no arrests had been made. Nothing had been done in the case. And then they wanted to claim that uh, they, they have a citizen's arrest law and like they, they didn't break any laws in what they did. But now, come on now, someone, you're talking about a citizen's arrest versus someone turns up dead. And you don't see something wrong with that? Someone, citizens arrest and someone dead, what does one have to do with the other? And they really were not pursuing to press charges until the video came out and everybody saw it and the attention went back to this situation and finally the uh, GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, went in and arrested the father and the son, you know, on some murder charges. So that's you know that that's that's step one, because we've we've seen this in in America plenty of times. They might get arrested. That's 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 one step, yeah. But then are they gonna get convicted? That's the second thing. And then after you're convicted, are they really gonna get sentenced? So it's it's like on 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 this side of the coin, the arrest is just yeah okay. They got arrested. We see that plenty of times. They do that for the media. They do that to make some people feel good. Oh, they got arrested. All right, then they got arrested. And then we've seen them not get charged or just they just let them off. We don't find any fault. So, and I believe the father, he used to work for the police department there. So he has ties with the people and they really just didn't want to touch him. Someone turns up dead and you don't want to touch him. This is, is a problem. It, it's not a new problem. It, it's a long-standing problem that needs to be dealt with. And there were a lot of uh, white people that were outraged about this as well. Because, I mean, if you're in America, we know there's racism here. And, I'm, I'm, and my page is not all about racism, but I'm just addressing this is what it is. Because in America, you have, you, have, you have a white America and you have a minority America. They're, they're two separate Americas, and, and we'll see it, especially when it comes to the judicial system, you'll always see the two Americas. Because if, if I will guarantee you, if a black father and son had went to make a citizen's arrest or ran down a young white male, and then he turned up dead, arrests would have been made that day. That day they would have been arrested. 
I guarantee you they wouldn't have looked at it as, well, it was a citizen's arrest law. We don't see anything wrong. It would have been all wrong from the beginning. They'd be sentenced today, already serving their prison sentences today. We wouldn't even be talking about, well, they still got to go to court. Wouldn't happen. You know, this is a problem in America. And then they, they, well, then they came out with a story saying, oh, this uh, Christian group made a, a support to Gregory and Travis McMichael page on Facebook. And come to find out from what I'm hearing about it, that's fake. So it could be somebody made that to stir up the pot a little more, you know, because they want more justice. I don't, I don't really know. But from what I'm hearing, it's fake that that page was made. All right, and and then see this is this is where this is where like religion comes in. Religion comes in because a lot of us, you know, people want to live in, in in some type of utopia. We want a perfect world, a world where no one gets murdered, no one steals from anyone, you know, no one is is sexually uh, uh, attacked. You know, there's justice for all. Everybody has a place to, to live. Everybody has food to eat. Everybody has provisions and clothing. This is the world that many would like to live in. But it is not the world you live in. So where does this world exist? In your mind. In religion. That's why they talk about Oh, Jesus is going to come back and, for what? Take you to that utopia that you, we, some of us so desire to live in. But it's just not real. The world we live in is, is, is full of hungry people. People with no provisions. Homeless people. You know, sex, sex trafficking. Sexual abuse. You know, uh, domestic violence, theft, uh, violence, uh, you know, murder. This is the world we live in, injustice. You know, uh, the foot on your neck by the, by the government. This, you know, being heavily tacked. This is the world you live in. But the world they desire to live in doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. So it, we, we, when, we, when we see this, like we've, we've seen the, the Sandra Bland case and the, um, I can't even name all the people right now that, that I'm thinking of that were, you know, killed by police officers and the officers, some are still working. You had some that lost their jobs. They just lost their job, but they're still free. And you got a, a small amount that might have gone to jail. And their their jail sentences from what you hear is not even like, they're not getting like life. They're getting some years. And then they'll be back out. So th this is the world we live in, a world that, that's just not right. It's not right. So this is where we come into play with the whole thing about the rapture. Oh, and you know, Jesus is gonna come back like a thief in the night and take his people and leave all the other people here. And they've been talking about the rapture, how long? Probably since the book of Revelations was, was written. And it's just not gonna happen. Somebody is not coming out the sky to take you to a utopia. You're stuck in this hellhole until you die. This is hell. This is your hell. This is it. This is going to either be your heaven or your hell or both. Either or. But there ain't no pie in the sky. Of all the billions of people that have died, billions of people that have died, none of them have come back to say anything. They don't come back. You know, they believe, oh, well, Jesus came. It don't count. It's not real. Not real. Not real. 
So there, there is no rapture. I'm sorry. If I got to tell you, I got to tell you, there is no rapture. It's not going to happen. And the crazy part is the Bible will talk about to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And then in another instance, and he's going to come back and they're going to blow the trumpets and all the dead bodies are going to come up. So are they, are they absent from the body and are they with the Lord or are they still in the graves, sleep? Which one is, are they, in, they sleep in the graves or they make, make up your mind? There's got to be one of them. Because then people are talking about the rapture coming, but then when somebody dies, they throw angel wings on them. They got a picture with them, they got the angel wing, the Lord done called them home. If they home, there's no need to come back for the, for the dead bodies. I mean, what? And, then, and if you're here, guess what? One day, you'll die. Then that, that's how you'll get there. But if you think Jesus coming back through the sky to save you, not going to happen. No rapture. No rapture. That's why it, what, what has to be done is put all this religious mess away. And, and the people are going to have to do the work. If we want justice, it's going to take people to stand up and say something. And, it, and, and the biggest case is not the, the people of color having to stand up because they've been standing up. It's going to take the white people to stand up and, and say enough is enough. We're tired of this and, and, and turn away from it in order for something to happen because black people have been marching and protesting and being attacked for years, years. And the gains are very, very slow. It will take the education uh, or educating white people on the situation in order to stand up and stop what's happening. Just like I said, if they're, they're, if they're sexual, uh, what would you call it? If there's sexual harassment on the job, you don't ask the men, is any sexual harassment going on? Because the men would be like, no, ain't no sexual harassment going on. You'd have to ask the women. The women, is there any sexual harassment going on? Yes, they saying things and you know they're, they're doing this and, and they're flirting and, and you'd have to ask the women. And then from there, the problem wouldn't be to educate the women about the problem because the women would be the ones getting the sexual abuse. You'd have to educate the men. That way they'd stop with the sexual harassment on the jobs. They, they be aware of what the sexual harassment is. That's how you got to stop the problem. Don't, you don't educate the victims. You need to educate the one, the perpetrators. You educate the perpetrators in order for the things to stop. So the problem is that the, the white America needs to be educated on what systemic racism is. They, they, need to be, they need to understand that the, the legal system is, is not working both ways. You, you're, you're, letting, you're getting letting one race get a, get a slap on the wrist and you slam dunk in the other one. For, for minor stuff, the, the, what, what one is going to not even probably get probation for, the other one is going to get years for. And like I said, the problem... You don't have to educate me on what's going on. I know what's going on. I live it. In order for this stuff to stop in America, we're going to have to educate white America on what's going on. And, and, they, and, and, and they're going to have to be told to take it seriously. Not to just feel guilty about it, but you need to understand it. Because don't do things, you know, uh, out, out of the guilt that makes you feel better than go back to what you know how, how you are no it needs to be I'm, I'm not going to be satisfied until everybody is treated the same when you have women out there fighting for their equality you can't just have the men come in and give them a cup of coffee and some cookies and then go on back to treat them lesser than no the women wanted to be treated the same way and one woman can't be happy because she got through until all of them get through. 
So this is this is what needs to happen in America. But then we then we have a situation where where Trump comes into office and just stirs the pot. We all know the racism was there. It was it's, it's always there, always there. But everything was more settled. And he just came in and stirred that pot. And now you got that. I listened to the video about the alt-right. And how the guy, he, he just really feels that, you know, white people should be superior. He doesn't want equality. They should be superior. And he, he don't feel guilty saying it or anything. But this is what's been drilled into a lot of people. And then, you, and then when things happen, I haven't heard Trump say anything about the Aubrey situation. He, he spoke well about the alt-right situation, like they were good people. He didn't have a problem with that. When they had the tiki torches and all that, he was cool with that. It, it's, it's, I mean, it's no secret that his, his views are very racist. Very racist. And then, and then I, I would say this to, to all of the, the white people in church. If, if, if you're serving the same Jesus, all of y'all got the same Jesus, you should really want equality across the board. Because if there's neither, you know, male nor female or Jew or Greek or slave or bond, and you're all one in Jesus, then why is the, even the white church quiet? They should, the white church today should be what the black church was fighting for civil rights. The white church should be the civil rights leaders today. Because I will guarantee they're not going to signal dogs on them. They're not going to put the water holes on them. They're not going to go out there with the police and beat on them. But if the white church today became the the civil rights movement today, then maybe some stuff will get done. If y'all really believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and got power in him and what have you, they should be the ones moving forward. But are they saying anything about what's going on? Are they, are they making a move to do anything? No. Why? For one, if they got that 501c3, they're going to shut up and be quiet and just sit back and let it happen. See, and, and, that's, and that's what happened with that. When, when, when the government allows you to be tax-free, but tell you, you can be tax-free, but don't make no waves, then the church has become part of the problem. Now you can't be a force that does something because you've been bought. You've been bought. They talk about being separate from the world then have been bribed by the world. They have been bribed by the world. You, you can carry on your little religious stuff, but just don't make no waves and don't bother what we do. Everything's going, what, what have you heard from the church during the whole COVID-19 thing? Nothing. Other than a few bold pastors decide they just want to have church service, which has nothing to do with the people. Just these greedy pastors know they, they got to survive through this thing. They want that money. And trying to get that online money is not the same as getting that money when they in the building where you can manipulate them to give that money. You can't be online talking about some. Um, type in if you're in the $100 line. You type in if you're in the $50 line. Type in if you're in the $20 line. You can't do all of that online. So they still having church. And some are just that brainwashed, they believe that the Jesus thing is real and that powerful and will neglect what is being told for safety precautions. They're going to do what they want to do anyway and go to jail. Some are just that brainwashed. But all in all, what has the church done to be set apart, to be looked at as something, I want to be a part of that. They've done absolutely nothing. 
they've sat back and been quiet. The church has been shut up because they want to be tax free. And you got these, these preachers that want to live off of these people. They, they dare not want to get a job. Their job is getting the money out of those people's pockets and into theirs. You remember back in the Bible when, when they made sacrifices, they told me they made sacrifices unto God. See, this is the difference from the sacrifices in the Bible to God from the sacrifices that they call today tithes and offerings was when they gave an animal sacrifice to God back then, the animal was burned up. No one ate any of that that bull that was sacrificed. Nobody got none of that. They burned it up. It was a sacrifice. But if, if you're giving money and that money, just follow wherever, whatever account that money is going into, that's their God. That money is not being burned up. That money is going into an account. Whatever, whatever account that money goes into, that, that's your God. That's where it's going. So, I, I never understood how, too, how, how these, these preachers talk about God called me to preach. Then why we got to pay you? So that means... Let, let, so I McDonald's called me to work but I'm looking for Burger King to pay me hmm? McDonald's says come work for us okay but Burger King gonna give you your paycheck so God called you to preach but we gotta pay you if you was called to do it, you need to be paid by the one that called you. You don't need to be paid by somebody else. This is the house of God. Then why, why, so why am I help paying the bills? Because God ain't helping pay no bills in my house. The church ain't paying no bills at my house. But I got to pay bills at the church that supposedly belongs to God. If I got to pay bills for this church, then obviously it does not belong to some God. Because if God made everything in the beginning had no help, he didn't need no money when he made the heavens and the earth. He didn't need money when he was making the trees and the plants and the herbs. He didn't need money when he was making the animals in the sea. He didn't need money when he made the animals on the land. He didn't need money when he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. He didn't need money when he made man. But now all of a sudden, he needs money. The God that doesn't change has changed. So he didn't need money then, but he needs money now. What has changed? That money is going to man. We know that. Well, you gotta help pay the bills at the place. Then, and, then it's not. Then stop calling it the house of God, cause you taking care of the place. Is God? Is God cleaning the bathroom? You taking care of the place. Is God cutting the grass out there? You taking care of that place. Is God gonna fix the roof? No, you doing it. These churches have building funds. They have building funds for years. What? What are you building? You got a building fund and still need extra money to get the roof fixed. Well, where's this building fund money going in? I'm just talking. I'm just talking. It's going through it right now. I mean, we, we, we need some changes. And, and people, we, we can't get anywhere until people put the God concept down and realize that God is going to have to be you, me, us. That's going to have to be the God, us. All of this 
there's nothing gets nothing done because after if, if after I do this I got to get up and do something I could have been doing it sooner if I had stopped wasting time doing this because this is nothing nothing Maybe, or faith without works is dead no all you need is the works Have faith, you're going to do the work. And you're good. But if, if God was helping everybody, then why are there so many starving? Why are there so many homeless? Hmm? I, 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 and I never understood how, how, how a pastor wants a $40 million jet or $60 million jet. And you got members in your congregation that can't pay their light bill. That don't know how they're going to pay their rent. And you're still asking money from them, and you, and and because you want a jet, you want a jet, but can't take care of the people right there in your congregation. What if you had that forty million, and you use that forty million to help your congregation? All they need is a three thousand dollar car to get around, a three thousand dollar used car to get around, but you need a sixty million dollar jet. They need twelve hundred dollars for their for their mortgage, but you need a sixty million dollar jet. Hmm. This doesn't make sense. And if you get a so you get a sixty million dollar jet, you can't go to the to the quick trip or the shell gas station on the corner and fill up. You can't just pull up to some gas station here and get some gas. So you're going to have to pay for fuel. I doubt you have your pilot's license. Some of them do, but they don't fly, they, they, not for their private jets. They, they fly, fly their personal planes with their, with their license, but they not the private jet because they're going to be sitting in the back relaxing, as they call it, getting ready to preach. So you're going to have to pay a pilot or a pilot, co-pilot, somebody. You, are you parking this, this jet in your driveway? Or does it have to be somewhere? Are you gonna take this jet to the Pep Boys and get it and get it get a tune up? Get an oil change? You gonna take it to Tires Plus, get and get the um get your alignment and, and some new tires and rotation? It's money all the way around. You gonna call the general to get insurance on this jet? Not only the sixty million to get the jet, but everything else that comes with getting the jet. That's like if, you, if when you move into a house, you, you move into a house that costs money. Now you, you need a lawnmower. You need a weed eater. You you need something to cut cut the shrubs. Unless you're just going to pay somebody, and, and even that is going to cost you money. You got a water bill, a power bill. You know, you can't call maintenance no more when you move into a house. It takes money. But my point of saying all that is, if, 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 if everything, if all of this stuff, you, you're getting a jet, a jet going to cost more money than that. If you, if you get a mega church, guess what? Not only do you have to pay the mortgage on the mega church and the light bill on the mega church, you got to pay the maintenance on the mega church. You got to have some type of insurance on the mega church. This is extra money that you're asking from people who can't pay these things in, in their apartment, in their own homes. But you need more money. And arrogance. Because the, the same people who will say God can speak through Balaam's ass, or donkey for y'all, those of you that don't know the story of Balaam, the prophet Balaam riding on his donkey and the donkey talked to him. But they'll say that if God can speak through an ass, he can speak through a man. Then so there's no man over there that can speak that you need a $60 million jet to go over there and speak? There's no, so God can't speak through no man at that place. This one person here who already got three jets need a fourth jet to go over there and speak and ask them for money. 
and the people right there in front of you need help. The people right in front of you filing for bankruptcy, having foreclosures, falling behind on bills, having, having repossessions of vehicles, right in front of them while they asking for another jet. And then you got these pastors asking people to, to give their stimulus check to the church. <sighs> Greedy. Greedy. They have been sold out by a 501c3 that allows the government to own and operate your church. Because what happened with this COVID-19? Oh, we, we, we separated. Church and state, we separated. But when, when they said, guess what? You're closed. They was closed. And your God didn't step in and say anything. People cannot see this is all about man. There is no God. It's all about man. And one man controlling another man. Using God to control the other ones. And then, then, it'll then, the, then the sad part is the ones that's being controlled by the God myth will go and protect the myth that's controlling them. And will protect the person behind the myth that's using them. Oh, what, what, what the Bible said, touch not mine anointed. Don't, don't speak against the man of God. Touch not mine anointed. And we'll protect this mess. While we sitting here living in a country where a man goes out for a jog and turns up dead, and, and, and then we got to go through all of this just to get some justice? Where is God in all of this? You had a man in his apartment that got shot and killed by a police officer and then they could bear, and they, they could decide whether they wanted to charge her or not. You got a cop, a woman in her own house, in her in her bedroom, and a cop shoots her, shoots her through the bedroom window. Where is this just God at? He must be on vacation, because he, he clearly doesn't see what's going on here, and clearly doesn't care. So while all of these people waiting on a rapture. All the trumpets are going to blow and Jesus is going to come back and get all his people and take us to the world we really want to live in. It's, it can be here if y'all will put that damn book down and do something here. These people talk about they're trying to find another planet to move to. For what? You're going to tear that one up. How about you take care of the one you're on? Take care and stop destroying the planet you're on. And you won't have to look for another planet. Because you'll tear up the next one. People living in a glass house throwing rocks all over the place. Now looking for a new glass house. But still bringing rocks with them. I, I can't believe you want to find another planet instead of just taking care of this. Stop tearing up the ocean here. Stop tearing up the, the ozone here. Stop polluting the air and the water here to make a dollar. Tear it all up to make money. Some of y'all don't even notice they had an issue with, with the salmon. The salmon are dying because they're farming salmon. Salmon produce in great numbers by themselves. They don't need to be helped. And now they got salmon farms where the salmon get diseases and then when and they're in the same water that the salmon have to go back through that stream to return back home to spawn. And on their, on their return trips home, they're catching diseases and not spawning when they get back. And so their numbers are dwindling away. And they said, what's the solution to saving the salmon? Stop farming them. And they will come back and their, their numbers will return like that. What are you farming them for? Your farming is killing them. But, but what is it all about? A dollar. It's all about money.
Every, this capitalistic world is it's all about money. What's that saying? They say people, men are going to find out when you destroyed everything that you can't eat that money. You can't eat it. You can eat some fish, but you can't eat that money. But you destroy in the ocean. I'll be going on and on about this. We put put this book down, put that Bible down, and start doing stuff, and stop all this wasting time praying and gathering for for some mythical God that has done absolutely nothing other than make people make excuses for why He has done nothing, and we do something that we can get somewhere. But it's hard for us that don't believe to get somewhere when the majority of people do believe and waiting on the pie in the sky, the heaven father in the sky to come help us. And we then we'll, then we'll get somewhere. We got so many people blinded that we, got, we need them to see in order to help us to get somewhere. And they don't see the problem with religion. Religion makes you dumb. Religion got you waiting on something that you can do yourself. You can do it. And if you don't do it, it will not get done. If you want something to eat, if you don't go in that kitchen and cook it, guess what? You won't eat. Wait on God to go in there and make you some breakfast. Wait on God to go in there and make you a sandwich. You won't eat. Guarantee you that. I'm just, I'm just venting. I'm just venting, y'all. I didn't know where I was going with this. I didn't know where I was going with this. But look, I don't know how long I've been talking to, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And we're going to follow that, that Ahmaud Arbery case, and hopefully they, they, they get some justice. Hopefully we get some justice. Because the justice system has not, has not been helping at all. Hopefully we get some justice. So look ahead, y'all. I'm out of here. I will see y'all on the next video. Peace.